Welcome everyone to West Explains Bass. Today we are doing the second part of signs, law of signs for uh, pre-calculus is a CUDA worksheet tutorial. Scotty, sorry about the delay, uh, went through a move um, and wanted to make the part two for you just in case you need help with it. You may be done with the worksheet already, but just in case, I made this video for you. Also, special shout out to George. He got me a new microphone. Really appreciate it, George. Hopefully, you guys can hear the difference. We're going to go ahead and start with 15, but before we do, we need a recap of number 13. So 13, we're using the law of science to solve each triangle. That means find all the angles and all the sides of the triangle. Now, you'll notice the first example we had was ASA, angle, side, angle. Those are pretty easy because if you have two angles, you can easily find the third angle because uh, of the triangle angle sum theorem. But um, some of the examples are not going to be like that. So if we scroll down to the second page, we have number 15. This one is angle, angle, side. So that one's very similar. And what I mean by similar is we're going to circle an angle and side pair. And then we're going to have an angle and side pair. And we're going to use the law of signs to first find this missing side right here. And then once we have that missing side, um, we can find this angle by using the angle sum. It's easy when you have two angles. And then we can find that last side right here. We'll call that Y. So that one's a fairly straightforward. So let's go ahead to this different example. This is side, side, angle. And I wrote it in that order for a particular reason. Maybe you guys can discover why I wrote it that way. Um, but here, we're going to, again, angle, pair. And then we want to choose this one versus this angle inside, because this one doesn't have any information. This one at least has a side, so we can figure out angle X. We'll call that angle X, we'll, and we'll call that angle Y. Okay, so we're gonna start by finding angle X. So the first thing we need to do is we need to say the sine of 110 over 30 is equal to the sine of X over 13, okay? That's the law of sines. We went over it in the first video. So we're gonna go ahead and I have this calculator here, so I'm going to just type in sine of 110. Uh, make sure you're in degree mode. Uh, so sine of 110, that equals, okay, I think I'm in radian mode. Let's make sure I'm in degree mode, sine of 110. And then I'm just cross multiplying here. So I'm going to multiply that by 13. And then what happens is I'm going to have 30 sine of x equal to that. Okay, and I have it on my calculator. I like to keep it stored, but it's about 12.2, just in case you're wondering. And I'm just gonna divide that by 30 to get sine of x by itself. So I'm gonna divide by 30, and I get about 0 .40, 0 0.407. And again, if you get an error, that means it can't be a triangle. For these ones, it says solve the triangle, so they're giving you a triangle that can be solved. But if it says error, that means it can't be solved. So I get that 0.4. 07, and I want to make sure I take the inverse sign of that. So I'm going to go inverse sign on this, inverse sign. Uh, it's not booking. Okay, there it goes. 0 0.407, and actually it's 2001. I'm going to try to put as much in as I can, and I get about 24 degrees. So after I take the inverse sign of both sides, okay, so I take the inverse sign of 0 0.407, and that gives me. Uh, x and x is going to be equal to sorry for switching that on you the the sides we get 24 about 24 degrees and i think it wants it rounded to the nearest tenth and that is rounded to the nearest tenth that we have 24 degrees for angle x this is the easy part once you have this which i should write as 24 degrees once you have this you just do 110 plus let me get rid of some of these lines I have 110 plus 24, that's 134, and then I have 46 to get me to 180, so I know this is 46 degrees. From here, again, we're gonna circle another angle pair, this time I'll use blue. Okay, I'm gonna circle this guy, which I say is 46, and then I always like to use the original. If I can, I'm gonna avoid using 24, because technically we rounded to get this, so I always like to go with the original one, because it's not rounded. So I'm gonna say sine 110, again, over 30, and this time I'm saying equals the sine of 46 over this missing side, we'll call it W. Okay, same deal, I'm gonna cross multiply. This time it's gonna be a little bit easier because I'm gonna do 30 times sine of 46. On this calculator I can just type it straight across. Pretty nice, and I get 21.58 about. It's equal to sine of 110 times W. Don't write the W right next to it like that. That's a 
kind of a no-no because sometimes you get confused. Technically, this should be W times sine of 110. Actually, I'm going to show you the way I prefer it for my students. Put the W first and then put sine 110 after so you're not tempted to take um, the sine of W. You don't want to take the sine of W. W is being multiplied. So I'm going to divide by sine of 110 at this point to both sides. And that's pretty straightforward on a calculator. Sine, oops, I'm going to put it in parentheses just in case. Sine of 110. I'm using a calculator I'm not super familiar with. Okay, so then I get W equals about 22. So W equals, um, so I did 21 divided by sine of, oh yeah, okay, so just, uh, just double check in 21 divided by sine of 110, and I get 20, okay, rounding the nearest tenth is gonna be 23. So W equals 23 feet. And that's that looks about right. Sorry, I was looking at that and I was second guessing myself, but I looked uh, incorrectly. 13 is opposite the 24, 23 is opposite the 46, and then 30 is opposite the 110. So generally, the biggest side is opposite the biggest angle, and that's why I was kind of checking in my head. So 23 is bigger than 13, but 46 is also bigger than 24. So that's a way to kind of test that we did that right. Okay, so there's our answers. We have 46 there, 23 there, and 24. So that's the way to do side-side uh, angle. This one's another angle-side angle. We already know how to do that. Um, and all the rest are fairly similar. So the second part of this video, uh, if you need help with these ones, it should be pretty straightforward. But again, these are just like the other examples we just did. Start with the angles, okay? Find the third angle there and then make your relationships. Same thing with this one. Anytime it has two angles, usually it's pretty easy. Find the area of each triangle. This one, we need to use the area formula. And here I have it demonstrated area equals one half times B times C times sine of A where B and C are like the sandwich between the angle that's given. So that's a side angle side relationship. That's the important thing. It doesn't necessarily need to be labeled B or A. It's not like you're always gonna be, oh, I wanna take the sine of A. It's not necessarily that. It's that A is that angle in between the two given sides, okay? So the first thing we always have to make sure is that we have an angle and we have the two sides uh, next to it given or at least found, okay? So if we're looking here, I would like to call D my angle A, okay? So this is my angle A, and I'm gonna make it so it looks nicer. Check this out. Get some white out, and now it looks like angle A. Boom. Okay, so we have angle A here, and I have five, which would be my one of my sides. I'm just missing this side here. So I have some work to do before I get to side angle side. I'm gonna have to solve for this triangle, which is kind of annoying, but it's a necessary evil. So this one is actually gonna take a lot of, of prerequisite work in order to get there. So let me erase some stuff here. What I'm gonna have to do is I'm again, establish my relationship. I got this one and I have this opposite side. So I'm gonna solve for angle F, even though I don't really, I don't really care about that. I really wanna find this one right here, but I don't have that angle. So I can't solve for that side. So I'm gonna have to do a lot of extra work. I'm gonna have to solve for this triangle completely before getting uh, the necessary information. Or, um, yeah, eventually, essentially I just need to solve for that. I could find this angle and go off that angle and call that my angle A, um, which actually I think I'm gonna do instead. So I called this angle A and I made a big deal about it, but I think I'm not actually gonna use it now that I'm looking at it. So let's just get into it so you can see what I'm talking about. So I have sine 35 over nine is gonna be equal to sine of F over five. Okay, so then I'm gonna cross multiply here. I have nine times sine of F, and then I have five times sine of 35. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that, five times sine of 35, I'm gonna start with that. And I get 2.87 about, and I'm gonna divide that by nine. Okay, so nine sine of F, and I divide by nine. Okay, I'm trying to move fast here, sine of F equals uh, 0 0.32 about, and then I'm going to take the inverse sine of that, 0 0.32, and that's going to solve for my angle F. So F equals, let me take the inverse sine now, inverse sine, 0.31865. Try to use as many dishes as possible, and I get rounded 18.6 degrees. Now I'm going to use that. Make sure you go to the nearest tenth here. 
So I'm going to say this is 18.6 degrees. Okay, based on these two, I can find my last angle. Okay, these added to this third angle E need to add up to 180. So I'm going to do 180 minus 35 minus 18.6. Then I get 124 point, or excuse me, 126.4. So this is 126.4 degrees. Now, like I said, you could find this last side by using the law of sines again. Okay, and that's what was my original plan if I wanted to make this my angle A. But notice here, I have the side angle side relationship. I have this side, I have this angle now, and I have this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use that instead of using law of sines again. I'm trying to reduce the amount of work. So I'm gonna just go ahead and use this formula. I'm gonna call my angle, the only angle I have in between two sides, I'm gonna call this A. So I'm gonna say sine of 126.4. Okay, so that's my first part. And then I have to multiply this by C and B. Well, B and C, doesn't matter which one they are, but we'll call uh, 9B and we'll call 5C. So we're just gonna multiply times nine times five, times B times C. And we're gonna multiply that by one half and that is going to be the area of that triangle. Okay, so now I just go straight across. So I'm gonna go 0.5 times nine times five times sine of 126.4, 126.4. And one thing you should do that I didn't just now is multiply nine times five in your head and type less into the calculator. So I've got about 18.1, and then we our units are centimeters squared. Make sure you have the correct units as you do this problem. Maybe let's do one more. Um, let's see here, just trying to think. Let's do number 22, that's kind of different than the other ones. Because it gives us two angles, the other ones are the same as number uh, 21. So we have two angles here, we can easily find the third angle. We're just gonna do 180 minus 99 and minus 45. And we're gonna get 36, so that's 36 degrees once we do that. And we're missing a side, so I think the best thing we would do is we can, I mean, it doesn't matter which side we find. Um, I'm just gonna say, let's find this side right here and we'll use the sine of 45 degrees. So if I'm trying to find that side, I need to establish this relationship and this relationship. Okay, I have an opposite in, uh, side from an angle, so I have to use the sine of 99 because I don't know the opposite side of 45. So that's over 4.7 and that's equal to sine of 36 over that missing side, we'll call it x. Okay, cross multiply here. And we're gonna get 4.7 times sine of 36. That's 2.7 about, 2.76. And that's equal to x sine 99. So I have to divide 2.76 divided by the sine of 99 degrees. And I get 2.8 about, so 2.797, 2.8 we'll call it, equals x. So I know this side is 2.8. So get rid of this, and I'm just gonna call it 2.8 right here. Now I have everything ready for my area for my, it's, it's awesome that angle A is the one that we're using. So we're gonna say one half times 2.8 times 4.7 times sine of 45 is gonna be equal to our area. Now I just get my calculator and I go straight across from here. So 2.8. 0.5 times uh, 2.8 times 4.7 times sine 45 and let's punch it and I get area equals 4.65 rounded to the nearest tenth 4.7 and that's centimeters squared again be mindful of the units that's one you can get nabbed on on test or quiz and that's all there is to it that's area and that was solving triangles with the different angle side angle and angle angle side and all that stuff combinations. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to check out more videos. It is summer right now, so they're coming out a little bit less sparingly. But again, all those summer school people, if you need a video, this one was requested by Scotty. Make sure to request a video and I'll be sure uh, in a comment and I'll be sure to make one for you. Until next time, make sure to stay tuned and join us for West Explains Best.